Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to sort out the squeaky TRX4. Since we took apart the drivetrain, replaced the bearings and re-greased it all, the mechanics are super smooth. But the poor old Traxxas motor is still struggling. You can really hear it's not happy at all. I tried running it underwater until the fresh water stays clear, but it still sounds rough with less power than you really expect. It's generally not worth trying to take these motors apart, it's just not designed for maintenance. If we lift the body off, we can see the motor bolted to the gearbox. This is the second one that I've worn out in this chassis, and to be fair, it has done quite well. It's been submerged in muddy water a number of times, even to the point where the brushes weren't making contact with the commutator, so it's not had an easy life. New, these motors come in at around 25 quid if you can find any. For the TRX4, it needs to be the reverse rotation version, which is often out of stock. Once you add shipping, you're going to be up around 30 quid to get your truck up and running again. This time though, rather than just get another Titan, I thought I'd try Holmes Hobbies Trailmaster Sport 550 21 Turn, a motor from an RC motor specialist. The motor is near enough the same spec as the Traxxas, just a little bit nicer. Along with the motor, we also get a red line winches sticker. Now, if you're into scale trucks in the UK, especially in the southwest, you'll know of Neil Brooklyn. Well, through Redline Winches, he stocks most, if not all, the Holmes Hobbies motors and bits. The best bit is the price. Even after shipping, the Trailmaster Sport is near enough the same as a Traxxas motor. Now, I should probably mention, I bought this through the website. Nothing was provided. I'm just a normal customer. In the bag with the motor, you also get a pair of round Holmes Hobbies decals. Always nice when you get two, so you can put them on either side of a body. And of course, you get the motor itself, which looks just like any other 550 can. If we hold it up next to a Traxxas motor, there's really not much to see, other than the colour. They're both 550 size motors after all. The one thing you can see from the outside though, the pinion end of the motor shaft on the Trailmaster is ball raced rather than bushed. That should make it a little bit smoother, and with any luck make it last a little bit longer too. The other thing to consider, the Trailmaster doesn't come with any wires. If you're comfortable soldering, it's easy enough to swap the wires from the Titan. Otherwise, I believe if you ask really nicely when you order, you might be able to get the lead soldered before Redline send your motor out for a few quid. To remove the stop motor, we need to lift the front of the battery tray to make access easier. There's a couple of countersunk screws that need to come out. Then we can lift the front, hinging it on the rear mounting screws. It only needs to come up an inch or so, so we can get comfortable access to the middle spur gear cover screw. Next, we remove the three spur gear cover screws. From factory, I remember these being extremely tight, so be very careful and use a good Allen key or driver that's not going to slip in the head. Now we just lift the motor out with the gear cover, remove the cover, Unplug the bullet connectors, and that's the motor free from the chassis. Like with most things on the TRX4, it's quite well designed. I always despair at some gearboxes where you have to all but strip them down completely just to swap out the motor. Right, on the end of the motors, one of the terminals has a red dot. This is usually the positive terminal, so the motor spins the right way. The oddball bit though is the Titan is reverse rotation, so we'll need to solder the wires to the Trailmaster the wrong way round. We want the black lead soldered to the red terminal. As I understand it, the Trailmaster is timed at zero degrees, so it'll run quite happily in either direction. Of course, it's just the insulation colour, so if you get them backwards it's not the end of the world, it's just that the colours won't match up when you connect the bullets. All I'm going to do is heat up the terminals on the Traxxas motor and remove the wires, then flux up and solder them to the Trailmaster. As long as you've got a nice beefy iron or gun, it's really easy to do. It's one of those skills that comes in really handy in RC. Having said that, I would highly recommend not trying to learn with a camera directly in front of your face. It does make it a bit tricky to see what you're doing. I went back off camera and reflowed the joints as they weren't the best in the world at closer inspection. Once you've got the motor wire soldered up, we can swap the motor plate over. 
Now we've got a motor that more or less matches the stock motor specs, so we can just use the same pinion. If you're going to go with less turns, you might want a smaller pinion, or if you're going to be running on 3S. For us, all we need to do is remove it from the old motor and transfer it straight to the new one. If we leave the screws partly in, we don't even need to worry about which holes to use. With that mounted up, we can swap the pinion. Now the Trailmaster has a much shorter shaft than the Titan, so when we move the pinion over, we also need to flip it round so the grub screw is now up against the bearing. Just nip up the grub screw to take up the slack for now. We need to check the position before we fully tighten it. If we offer up the motor to the gearbox, slotting the motor mount in, we can see where the pinion teeth come on the spur gear. Now it's not a perfect test as we really need the gear cover to align everything, but then we wouldn't be able to see. Holding the motor so it's level with the chassis is going to be good enough. We just need to check that the pinion's teeth sit central to the spur gear's teeth. If not, adjust the position and retest. Once it's spot on, we can fully tighten the grub screw. Pop the motor back in, fit the gear cover and its three screws. Plug the motor into the ESC and we can do a very quick test to make sure everything goes in the right direction. If we turn on the radio and connect up a battery, we can very gently check to see it's all spinning correctly. If not, it should just be a case of swapping the motor wires. Well, it sounds infinitely better than the old Titan. No more squeaks. Very nice. Now, before running the new motor in anger, Holmes Hobbies recommend a dry run-in. Essentially, running the motor unloaded for 5 minutes at 3 volts. Now, I usually wouldn't bother on a crawler, but I'm sure they know more than I do, so let's do it. We'll quickly remove the three gear cover screws again and lift out the motor. Now, this time I'm going to connect it to a bench power supply. Now, I'm not sure what you'd do without one. Perhaps a couple of NIMI cells in series, or connect it up to an ESC and use the throttle trim to run it at about 20% throttle. If you've got any other ideas, stick them in the comments. Anyway, I'm going to run it for about 5 minutes. Keep an eye on the current, it starts at just over an amp and gradually gets lower. In effect, the motor is becoming more efficient. The main difference will be the brushes taking on the shape of the commutator and to a lesser extent the bearings freeing up. Usually if I do any running in on a crawler, it will just be by driving slowly for a couple of minutes before doing anything crazy. It seems to work well enough, but as I say, Holmes are a motor specialist, so we'll follow their recommendation. Back when brush motors were all we had, there were all sorts of crazy running in methods, none of which ever seemed to make a blind bit of difference to me, except some of the concoctions definitely wore the motors out rather than in. After 5 minutes, the current has dropped by just under 100 milliamps, so very roughly 10%. Can't be bad. Now the motor can go back in, gear cover on, screws in, battery tray gets pushed back down and its two screws go back in, and well that's about it really. We'll give it another quick bench test just to make sure there's nothing making any bad noises. One of the classic things on a TRX4 is if the pinion isn't in the right spot you can get the end of the grub screw touching the spur gear which makes a ticking sound at low speed. This setup seems okay though, so let's head out and give it a test. So here we have two TRX4s. The near one is mine with the new motor. It's been on a seven mile trail, so the motor is now very much running. It's got slightly larger than stock tires, but otherwise it's the same setup as the second TRX4, which is still running a Traxxas Titan. It's never been underwater and runs pretty much just as well as when it was new. Now this is gonna be a highly unscientific test, we did leave the bodies off as the stock Land Rover shell is a lot heavier than the Proline Raptor. But still, you can only tell so much from a drag race. It was fun trying though. Bear in mind, I was trying to drive and keep an eye on the camera at the same time. Three, two, one, go! Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, in top speed at least, the Trailmaster is pretty much identical to the Titan, which makes sense with them both being 21 turn 550 motors. Okay, three, two, one, go. <laughs> that went well. 
We did some crawling too. Well, I say crawling, I live in the land of no rocks, so it's more hill climbing with the odd tree root. Again, I was mostly looking at the camera display, so my driving was a bit lead fingered. Off camera, I did try some careful driving and the new motor was nice and smooth and very controllable at low speed. Even with the Traxxas ESC, it runs great. I think if you were to swap to a Hobby Wing WP1080, it would be even better. To sum up then, the Trailmaster Sport is a slightly better motor than the Titan in every respect for the same price. So if you want a replacement for a worn out stock motor, there's really no contest. Get the Holmes Hobbies one. And of course, if you want to spend a bit more, they do a huge range of motors with even better performance. The Trailmaster Sport is just their entry level one. One thing to watch out for, there are dodgy copies everywhere. Make sure you buy from someone linked with Holmes Hobbies and not some random Happy Bunny 44 on eBay. Right, if there's any fun footage left over, I'll let that run. Otherwise, that's it for this week. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a message if there's something on your mind. Bye guys! Three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go.